Ali Abdal is known for making the transition from doctor to YouTuber, growing an massive audience and establishing himself as one of the top creators in the productivity space. But you might not know that he's also an investor, including in property. In fact, he read my book years ago to get him started and was a regular listener of our podcast. But despite all that, and although we share an editor at Penguin Books, we'd never met until the other week. This feels like a pretty weird moment for me because I've been listening to your voice since like 2017 <laughs> and I've also invested in four properties through your company. It's great to be here. And like since we, after you read the book, I think your name kind of popped up as a buyer. I was like, hang on, that's Ali. I recently spent a morning with him and some lessons immediately jumped out at me about how he approaches business and investing. So even if you're not operating on the same level as Ali just yet, if you apply these insights about how he thinks and what he does, you will become a better investor. First, with his background in productivity, Ali knows that there's a direct link between how much time and energy he puts into his business and how much money he makes. And he also knows that the returns he can generate from his business dwarf what he could make from financial investments. He's spoken in the past about how he launched a product that made $1.6 million in 30 days. There is no financial investment on earth that could get you anywhere close to that. As a result, Ali thinks about every investment, not just in terms of its potential financial returns, but also what input of time and focus it'll need from him. And this makes total sense. I mean, imagine if Ali had botched the launch of his $1.6 million course because he was so busy referencing tenants for his buy to let or reading company reports to decide which shares to invest in. It sounds so crazy that that's just not realistic. I see people doing this at a less extreme level all the time. For example, many of our clients are consultants who could charge upwards of a thousand pounds per day for their time, yet their impulse is always to spend a day driving to a property to inspect it and clear it out at the end of a tenancy because they don't want to pay someone else to do it. Ali has invested in property and because he understands the value of his time, he's avoided this trap. But he's still discovered, like we all do, that random issues crop up that demand your attention and steal your focus, even if you're trying to be completely hands-off. So when I explain the system that I use to manage my entire portfolio in less than an hour a month, and I'll link below to a video that touches on this, he suddenly became much more enthusiastic about buying more. And he has also taken a hands-off approach to another aspect of investing, which makes total sense, but surprised me at the time, which is using a financial advisor for the investments his business makes. Ali's put out many videos about investing, and it was clear from our conversation that he easily knows enough to do a decent job of doing it himself. If you have a mortgage, for example, and you and you've got a mortgage now, let's say I've got a mortgage for 200k. 10 years later, that 200k would be quote, worth less. Yeah. But I would still have to only pay off 200k. Correct. By having a financial advisor, there's someone whose job it is to take funds out of the business every month and put them to work. There's no chance of it being overlooked or forgotten about or overthought. And even if Ali pays an annual fee of 1% of everything that's managed for him, which is just a guess, I don't know, he'll still likely come out far ahead after paying that fee because he has actually invested. The point here isn't that everyone should use a financial advisor. That's a personal decision. But you should think about what's likely to prevent you from investing and put systems in place that stop those things from happening in the first place, like Ali has done here. But Ali's use of professionals to help him goes way, way beyond just using a financial advisor. As you'd expect from what he creates content about, he is incredibly incredibly optimized. As well as having a team to handle most parts of running his business, he also has a virtual PA and an in-person PA. He described having an in-person PA as a game changer. And I can see why, because it means everything's always ready for him and he doesn't have to waste time fetching lunch or arranging transport. It can seem extreme at first, but when it comes to Ali's business, the bottleneck is always his capacity. He can only film so many videos, write so many social media posts, plan out so many courses. So it makes sense to set up everything he possibly can to maximize his time. So when Ali walks into the studio to record a video, he can be filming literally 10 seconds later. All the cameras are set up, someone's put his notes in front of him. There's no friction at all. And because he's outsourced everything that he finds to be a drag, he's left only with tasks that give him energy. That means that he can achieve what looks like an incredible amount in a single day. Imagine how much more you could get done if you weren't having your energy and time zapped by stupid annoyances like sorting through emails, calling the council because they build your council tax wrong, or the million other inconveniences that stop us from doing our best work. Imagine if you could offload energy draining tasks to someone else for just five hours per week. This wouldn't even cost much, especially if they were based in another country and it would unlock far more than just five hours of productivity for you because you'd approach everything else with more energy and you wouldn't have your focus constantly interrupted with annoying tasks from which it takes you time to get back to what you were doing. It could allow you to generate far more cash to fund your property business with or even make the difference between getting around to investing or not at all. That's something that everyone can learn from to set up their life more optimally. 
But of course, there are traits unique to Alan that have allowed him to achieve such massive success. And one of them isn't obvious at first, but may just be the most powerful of all. I'm slowly getting better at this, but if there's something I don't understand, I tend to just nod along and hope I'll be able to catch up as we go along. The people who I admire most don't do that. They're not afraid to ask seemingly silly or simple questions, and Ali is a great example of that. He actually asks great questions because he's often approaching a topic from first principles, wanting to understand it from the ground up, and the result is he ends up truly grasping topics well. He doesn't just have a superficial understanding. What is money? No, Surge pricing. Yeah. Surge pricing, yeah. What's, what, what's the deal with that? Okay, I, I, I still don't quite understand why the government has to borrow money. What are some habits that cost people the most financially? Do you have any rules or principles that are helpful for you and for maybe people that you would advise around saving money each month? His questions might sound basic, but he's not embarrassed to ask them because he knows it builds the foundation of knowledge that he needs before adding more advanced concepts on top. To make this even more powerful, he's constantly pulling in ideas from other fields to compare or to use as a metaphor. And the areas that he can pull from are vast because he reads widely and takes in ideas from fields that at first appear to have nothing to do with his core business. Using comparisons like this provides a framework that he can attach new ideas to, allowing him to learn much more quickly than the average person. This feels like it comes naturally to Ali, but you can replicate it. Just keep asking why if you don't fully understand something, build up a solid foundation of knowledge, and aim to learn from everyone you meet and make connections back to what you already know. If you do that, you can't fail to start making better investments over time. And this is particularly important in property, because it's terrible for the amount of myths that are floating around. People just repeat facts that have no grounding in reality, and if you accept them at face value, they can be extremely harmful. So keep on watching this video, where I bust 13 of the most damaging property myths in just five minutes, allowing you to avoid the common mistakes they cause and make better investments.